Hey guys, Igor here, and I uh, hope you all had a happy new year. So I'm going to do a cat drawing for you today, and I'm going to start off with this sketch pencil. It's an orange Prisma color, and it's the same one that Mr. Jake Parker uses. So here I have a Google image of a cat pulled up, just so I have a little bit of reference to go off of, and I don't have to sit here and try to brainstorm for too long about how I want the image to look. So I'm going to... I'm going to copy some of these shapes over and uh, I'm not going to be too precise on how how they look. Everything is just going to be used as a way to kind of help me move my drawing along. So we're using reference to create not just to copy. So we have this little kitten and it's walking so this orange pencil, as you can see, it's really soft and you end up putting down not too much color. Uh, for me, you know, I could see it a lot better than what the camera is picking up, but uh, in reality, you know, or in practicality, when you're actually using this thing, uh, you can see it quite well. And it won't be until I, I go in and start inking that you'll really start to see what it is that I'm drawing. Also you can push the pencil down a little bit harder and uh, and that'll also give you much darker strokes and uh, I'm not doing that just yet because I'm playing around with placements and I don't want to put down colors or put down really dark strokes where they don't belong. So we have this I'm going to draw a circle to kind of indicate where I want the actual face to be. Here's the head of the cat. And kittens kind of have a lot of fur in this area and the eyes are situated somewhere along the bottom, bottom part of the face. Well, I guess it also obviously depends on which way the cat is facing. Then we have the nose. Normally it would sit a little bit lower than this, but in this case, because our kitten has his mouth open, the nose will move up a bit. Then we have the little cheekbones or the parts that have the whiskers. Let's separate those out, which will form the mouth. and he's got his tongue out so right away I don't want the outer edges to be too geometric because you know kittens have a lot of fluff and that's going to kind of distort all of these outer lines and if you make them too precise it'll it'll make your cap have really weird proportions so here I am erasing all the little outer lines and now we can go in and figure out the exact shape of the eyes and how the pupils look so the eyes on the, this cat in particular it's going to have a dark pupil with a dark rim around the eyes so the eyes will basically be outlined and then looking outwards outside of that dark outline you have some some light fur so I'm going to outline the light areas because I want to avoid coloring those in and then we can Kind of color the fur around it. Let's do that same thing to the other eye. I have these two dark lines for the fur. And this eye kind of slants downwards, the eyebrow. Pupil. Use the tip of the pencil to get some stronger lines in there to really help define the edge of the eyes. Again, just color around the areas that are supposed to stay light. 
then we can go in and we can lightly shade those darker portions. Let's let's shrink the size of the nose down a bit. Just because a giant nose isn't really that cute. Unless, you know, your definition of cute is a little bit different from everybody else's. Okay. We're going to have I think we can shrink these little cheekbones down a bit to make them, you know, just play around with the proportions a little bit. I'm not trying to go for a photorealistic look because, well, already I have much shorter legs than, than what the reference image has. Let's get the ears, short little ears. We're going to have a lot of fur covering them up anyways. And then those other ears, we can erase, get rid of this outline, and instead put in some fur. And then we want fur all throughout the rest of the cat, and his tail goes up like this. The eyes look a little bit awkward still, but I think that's because we don't have any of that ink to really outline it and define the shape. Right now it's kind of all up in the air. So we put down a little bit of color for the, the rest of the fur. fur that goes over the ears and then the ears um, themselves are going to be a little bit darker so I will fix that when going back in with ink the forehead here will be a little bit shaded because we've got darker fur coming down and then it goes slightly lighter gray around the eyes and then the tail itself is a little bit darker too we could even here, I'll move this down so you can see. We can even push the tail into the second page because it's the back of a different drawing. If I end up ripping out that drawing in the future, we're not really losing much, you know, because the detail is not that crazy. But yeah, I'm going to extend the tail upwards a bit, kind of give it a fun little interactive, you know, experience, whatever, for anybody who will want to see my um, sketchbook in the future. You know, they might find that pretty neat. And I gotta make sure I get all these dark tones around the mouth. So it would be the mouth areas where the tongue is yeah, isn't covering. Whatever the tongue isn't covering gets a lot darker. Looking at the reference image. And we have some white areas, white fur around the mouth. So when going in and coloring that, I need to be a little bit careful. All right, let's go in and and ink it. I have different ink pens here that I also ordered on Amazon recently, and I'm probably going to use the 5 milliliter, or at least the 05 size. It's not, not too thick of a tip. So the first thing I'm, I want to do is get the eyes situated. After we ink it, I'm going to erase all of this orange. And that's because we're going to go in and we're going to color it with Copic marker. And because the cat itself is actually already gray, the real photo that is, the reference photo that I'm using, um, it's going to be perfect because I have gray Copic markers to use. So, give it some approximate outlines. Try to keep the eyes similarly shaped you know it's an animal 
and a lot of things in real life aren't perfectly symmetric so also depends on the kind of angle that you're viewing you know, the facial features from stuff will also vary in size so even if it's a little bit off it's something that could work make sure that my pupils are somewhat round I'm gonna color them in anyway so it's okay if one's a little thicker than the other when it comes to the stroke alright the nose the nose has this kind of cut down the middle and it's got the two bumps for the nostrils what else should I outline the fur in most of the case is going to be very soft and I can either keep the I can either have a stroke on the outside or kind of leave it be and I, I think I'm just gonna stick with a stroke I think the main difference would be in procreate I wouldn't I wouldn't leave an outline but in traditional it's just faster color in around the tongue the tongue itself should get darker too uh, towards the top since there's less lighting that hits it but for now we are just going to do that there a really dark fur areas I guess you can leave little strokes too So I'm just going to go quickly along the outline to kind of indicate. Uh, also, I have the camera at a pretty steep angle, and that's just because uh, often I have this habit of kind of really laying over the top of my drawing while I'm doing it, and uh, having the camera kind of slanted at this angle will allow me to do what I normally do and still uh, provide you guys with enough visibility. So it might look a little bit different to you than it does to me because you know you're viewing a two-dimensional object at like a more extreme degree uh, so I'll be sure to kind of fix that at the very end so you could see the finished product but until then hopefully it's not too distracting so we got the little whisker holes right there I'm gonna try to avoid putting down as much uh, strokes as possible around the white fur because I want to save those softer gradients for for the light Copic markers so as less strokes around this area as possible now areas that get darker around the outlines of the eye I can kind of indicate those a little bit we could probably go back in with some some of these ink uh, ink pens after after we've got our cat all outlined and uh, even colored in we can go back with some of these ink pens and you know add more strokes here or there depending on what we feel the painting still or the drawing still needs so here I'm, I'm going to slide this down real quick go in and kind of outline the tail nothing crazy you know just vary up the strokes the directions now we do want to have the kitten the head you know separate from the body and one way you do that is you use these outline strokes on the body itself and also along the head. So that's what I'm doing here. We're going to separate separate the head from the body by doing this. Uh, you can also do this by kind of filling, let's say, this back portion right here. You can fill that in with a slightly lighter color or darker color depending on how you want your lighting to go. But in this case, even if we fill it with the same color, we kind of have this outlined edge for both of the things, a kind of lightly defined border. 
if you will. So I'm looking at the reference image and just checking the direction of the fur so that we can kind of get a good good grasp on it for when we go in with the Copic markers. So if you don't have the Copic markers, you know, you can honestly just stop either this early well, go in and uh, add any more strokes for the fur that you know that you find necessary. But yeah, you can stop at this stage. But if you do have Copic markers or watercolors or something that uh, allows you to get gradients, uh, you know, different different values, then I would highly recommend that you try to paint along because honestly, it's so much fun and. And it just makes the drawing look so much more complete. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to, right now I'm putting down a couple of strokes here and there to kind of push the direction of the fur. But I think these are kind of unnecessary. So let's just move on. First, let me fix the eyes a bit. We have this large dark outline. And... All right, so now for the Copic markers, we're gonna use, we're gonna start with a light color. Oh, and I almost forgot that I want to erase as much of this orange. Oh, the ink hasn't fully dried, so it's smeared a little bit. You gotta be careful about that. And these other areas, it should be dry. That's okay, it's smeared, we can, we can always fix it with, uh, we have like that white gel pen. So we can color up, uh, cover up any imperfections and fix it in the future. All right, so we've got our little cat outline. Now I still have the M the reference image pulled up, so I don't think I'll be too lost doing this. So we're using a C1 Copic marker, and here we want to mainly lay this thing down wherever there's fairly light grays. Even if you go over the areas that have dark grays, the cool thing about it is you're going to cover it up with a darker Copic marker anyways. But uh, just to not waste any marker, you know, mainly focus on hitting those lighter gray areas. I also don't want to go over the white fur because I think I might actually use a different warm gray for that. And the reason is the lighter fur on the cat just has this softer glow. And the C1 compared to the W1 gives it a less warm vibe. So I would definitely recommend to anybody who, who wants to pick up Copic markers is get a set of gradient ones. So from light to dark, you know, so you have a little bit of variety. Uh, just because the downside to these markers is when they're running out, you have to have the specific color refills for each. So you essentially have to buy the markers twice, you know, the marker itself once and then the refill another time. So I would definitely get, I, I bought, I think, eight different refills and it was for all the warm grays, all the dark grays, and, uh, and a, two colors like some pale green and a pale blue. Probably get more refills later, but for now, you know, I just felt those were going to, those were already dry for me. Now we're going to use a C3. And this is a slightly darker gray, so pay closer attention to where you're laying it down. And also you could go into those lighter gray areas and leave a couple of strokes to indicate that you know that the fur is uh, is fuller if that makes sense you know that you've got a little bit of of highlights and some shadows in there so we've got this darker gray all along the face here and on the nose these two areas here it goes even darker 
luckily we have C5 and a C7 pencil to push that even further. The outside gets lighter, so let's leave it there. The eyebrow areas also get lighter, so I'm not going to worry about touching that up too much. The ears actually get quite a bit of white, but luckily I have the the gel pen to go in and highlight those areas. There's quite a lot of different variation in the fur on the feet, so make sure you leave some of that lighter gray poking through. Also, since there's a lot of fur that's being tangled up around the lower part of the mouth, I'm going to go in and add some strokes here and there. So this was all definitely possible without having all these extra pen strokes, but um, I'm going to add more. Um, I would recommend you either do, you kind of take that style and push it, or you just leave it all alone. And now I'm also going to erase the orange down here. Let's go in into the W, the warm areas around around the mouth. And most of this will still be colored in. It's just along the small portions on top that that the light actually hits it and gives it a full white color. Now also, these don't go full white, so let's color them in. Hmm. I'm really confused as to where my, my C5 color went. Here is the flesh colored marker. Okay, I found my C5 as well, that's good. So here's the C5 and the flesh tone, it actually says flesh on it, so R02. Came, came in with my 32 pack. So I'm gonna color the tongue in, but the tongue's gonna be a little bit light, so one way you kind of counteract that is you use the grays to shade the color or to tone the color down. So we're going to use a little bit of C3 before we go into the C5. And we're going to put down some some gray right here. To help tone the tongue color down. Like that. It's, uh, it's working all right. Okay, now we go back with the C5 and we start hammering out these darker areas of the fur. So I'm going to use kind of like a stroke technique to indicate that, you know, the fur. where all the fur hairs lie instead of putting down a big flat color Just in areas where where it gets quite a bit darker I'll do the flat color but to thin it out to kind of gradiate it into the rest of the the fur throughout the kitten I'm gonna I'm just gonna put down these soft softer thinner strokes 
along the bottom side of the eyes it gets quite dark and it continues on all the way out here Also, it looks like the eyes themselves are quite a bit darker. So it's not like a fancy light blue color or green or yellow. It's just a gray, gray eye. I'm going to color all of it in, and then I'm going to drop some highlights in. I think that's going to give us uh, the look that, you know, that we're looking for. Color the nose in gray because the nose in the image is gray as well. Good. Use this darker gray around the mouth. Along the bottom of the feet to help ground our getting into the scene. Keep looking around to make sure that we didn't miss any obvious dark places for the fur. Let me get this darker color in on the tail here. Move it, move the image down so you guys can see. And we're going to blend it into the background a bit by switching while the ink is still somewhat wet. Switch between 5 and 3. And really just go along the wet color and try to spread it out. So hopefully that does the trick. Now, let's take a look. What are we still missing? Well, we're missing some white highlights. So for that, I have my white uh, Jelly Roll 08 pen, and that will work well. I'm trying to add little highlights like this. Along the top here, we've got some Some white fur along the ears. I think we can actually, I was gonna say we can add some darker color, and I think that's true. Before I do the white highlights, I wanna add some darker colors in little sections of the ears to help that white color pop, but to also kind of give a little bit of depth to the ears. We also have a, a C7, which is darker than any other marker color we've put on so far. And I only want to apply it in areas where we already have really dark shading. This is just another one of those things that will help push the values and kind of help everything pop. We'll just sparingly put it down here and there. All right. I think that's all right. We'll keep the background for uh, pretty light. 
I'll, I will still go back with uh, the darker ink. So let's get back to our highlight. We need some lighter color up here. And I'll try to position my hand so that you guys can see. Just just leave, you know, some some strokes. Sometimes with a jelly roll pen, it doesn't do a clean stroke in one go. And you need to wait until what you just put down dries to and go again. So we've got whiskers here. And I'll probably wait for it to dry and go again over these whiskers because uh, they're kind of see-through right now. And that's not intentional. I want, I want some good solid white lines. So we'll go over them, over them twice. And I'm going to use some of this white to shade around this fur. Everything else looks fine. Alright, I'm fairly happy with this so far. Let's, while we wait for the white, white pen to dry, let's uh, add a little bit of a little bit of ink strokes throughout. You can probably get away with some some more strokes underneath the eyes since it's darker fur. And you've got these long fur lines going throughout throughout the leg. I would have done this slightly different with a pencil if I was just focusing on pencil because you can have really soft uh, variations throughout the piece which is you know really good for fur but it's not like you can't get away with it with ink and uh, personally I, I used to love working in pencil but it's harder to kind of show it on camera and uh, not only that but the markers are really fun so you know, might as well learn it this way, this way too. And now I can also go in and use the W3. That's uh, my hand going over the light source, so it gets darker every now and then. And uh, with this W3, I will darken the white fur, areas of the white fur here and there. whether that's to make the cheeks pop more or kind of darken the outside parts of the white fur as you see here maybe some underneath here you know it's kind of just like a process often I'll, I'll draw in my sketchbook when watching a movie or something and you, know, you just have fun with it all right, I think the jelly roll pen is dry enough. Let's go do a second pass. I'm going to clean the tip off with my fingers. I don't know if it's dry yet. It's being a little bit stubborn about covering up my previous lines. It's not exactly white out and I've seen other artists that just use a straight up acrylic paint with a thin white brush and I actually have both of those things so that might be something that I kind of uh, play around with in the future. I have not done so and I think it would be pretty interesting to do that in a video kind of see what the results are compare it to this pen Anyways, I think that's that's pretty much it. We have this cat, this kitten. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with how that looks. I'm gonna sign it.
changing the initials to an, a 16, indicating the new year. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, maybe learned something. If you have any questions, be sure to leave it down in the comments. You know, like, share, whatever you want to do. Go right ahead. Um, and yeah, have a good day. Alright, here's the image a little bit less distorted. You know, hopefully you enjoy it. I'm probably not going to link the reference. Uh, just because you can Google it by like typing in fluffy kitten. You know, that's not really the point of this exercise. It's more of just, you know, you just draw, ink, marker it, and then there you go. Again, thanks for watching. Have a good day, guys.